All right, metalheads. DJ Ram here. Guess what? I got Ash from Ashes of Fire live on air right now. What is up, my brother? How's it going, bro? Doing good. Hey, everybody in the chat, give me a horns high so I know you can hear me good. Horns high. Horns high. <laughs> oh, we got horns. They must be able to hear us. Sweet. Okay, man. Well, you're not going to get off easy. You're going to get grilled just like every other band. So. <laughs> I'm ready, man. Okay. So, uh, okay, let's start. What's uh, so? What's going on with Ashes of Fire? What's new? What's what's, what's in the works? Uh, I got uh, a couple new songs coming. I'm still working on the lyrics. Um, right now, I'm just basically trying to get my first album finished, and then uh, working with Rob Machete from Generation Kill. Uh, you know, he reproduces all my music. He does a good job, you know. If it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't even be here. But <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he does a great yeah, job. Yeah, you know, so that's pretty much it. You know, I'm trying to get the first songs all finished and uh, get the first album done. And then uh, after that, you know, I'll be looking to put the band together. So right now, it's just, you know, me and me and Rob just kind of doing it for that, like, you know, now. And then uh, once I get all the songs ready, I'll be looking to go on tour. You know, probably just locally at first, and then after that, well, who knows, you know. Yeah, all right, that's awesome. That's basically, so, basically it right now. <laughs> so so what's your plans to, once you're ready to, like, you actually put the band together, what's your plans to kind of go about that? How are you going to do that? Um, well, I mean, right now, you know, I'm just kind of, like I said, doing my own thing. And then, uh, I mean, Machete already told me that, you know, if need be, he would play guitar or bass for me. And then he said he was going to, he's kind of like my manager in a way, you know. Right, I got you. And he said he's going to take my album and show it to his uh, record label and his people. And then, you know, help me out even putting the band together. He's, I, I, mean, I can't say enough about these off. That's <laughs> He's one of my best friends, so. So how long, so have, you, me out a lot. How long have you known Rob? I've known him only about six years, you know. But, I mean, you know, within that time, you know, we became pretty good friends. I actually used to watch him on on MTV when I was, like, eight. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know? Uh-huh. So, yeah, I mean, you know, that's basically what's happening right now. And, uh, I mean, yeah, that's, that's gonna be, that'd be awesome if he could come play with me. That'd be great. Yeah, I guess so. so you know, a few of the songs, you know, I made up the riffs and everything for and I just gave them to him and he turned them into the whole song like I, I wrote The Breeze of Hate uh, I wrote Die for Your Sins I know that's your favorite definitely my favorite favorite <laughs> it's because it says die like 18 times of course <laughs> and I wrote This Torment um I thought I wrote another one I can't remember come on man you can't remember what you wrote really well, uh, you know, I got a lot of them now. It's getting up there, you know. <laughs> so I know, I, you know, I definitely wrote those three. Uh, the first one song I ever wrote was was "Die for Your Sins," and uh, yeah, you know, it just went from there. And you know, some of the things that I like uh, "Dead Eyes" is a song that Rob wrote. He just sits around writing all day, you know, when he's not working, and he gave it to me and said, "Do something with this." And, you know, Hellbound was like that. All my newest stuff, Rob wrote most of the music for it. You know, Ballad of Blood, he actually approached me with that and was like, I got an idea for this ballad, you know, but I want it to be real heavy vocals with, like, pretty sound of music. So, you know, here it is. Write the words, you know. So mainly, I'm a vocalist and a lyricist, you know. I don't really play guitar a whole lot. I do, but... You know, not the greatest, you know. So that's why he really, you know, he really helps me out a lot with that. Yeah, that's awesome. How did you? So how did you meet Rob in the beginning? I mean, how how how'd you guys hook up? Well, uh, he got out of propane for you know his personal reasons and moved to Florida. You know, I was born here. I've been here all my life, pretty much. And uh, he moved here. You know, got married or whatever, and. Uh, 
uh, he worked at Waste Management. <laughs> it was a garbage man, just like he is now. You know, and uh, he shaved off the uh, Islam beard that he had in the band. No offense, Rob, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I didn't recognize him right away, you know, and I started working there. Uh, my brother was the supervisor. He got me the job. And, uh, you know, I was kind of telling him, you know, I wanted to start doing some music stuff. My brother, my brother's like, well, you know, Rob was in a few bands. Didn't know who he was at all. I don't think anybody that worked there did, you know. And uh, I'd never heard his last name until I walked up to him, you know, and uh, he was doing his own thing, you know, his solo stuff at his house, which is awesome. If you ever get to hear it, it's great. What, you know, what is it called? All the, he did basically the same thing I'm doing. He, he did the, the music and, and he put his own vocals, wrote all the words, you know, and so I walked up to him one day because my brother said he was in a band and I was like, hey man, you know, you, you, you're in a band? And he's like, I was in a band. And he's uh, I was like, no, we have a local band, you know? And he's, no, I was in a, you know, MOD and propane. And I was like, propane? <laughs> I was like, no, way. this is, this is, this, I've seen you on TV, you know, it was kind of starstruck. But, you know, and uh, he swears I said my two favorite bands are Pantera and Pantera, but I never did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I told him I listened to stuff like Pantera, propane, MOD. Right. You know, it's cool. And then, you know, that's basically how our friendship started. You know, I was like the only other metalhead there, I think. And, uh, you know, I mean, we became friends. I went to his birthday and hung out, you know. He showed me a couple chords on guitar. He got me, basically started even trying to play guitar. You know, and I went to his house. He showed me how his uh, home studio worked. You know, I was like, well, I mean, if this guy can do it, you know, I can do it. You know, so it's just been kind of a process to get to where I am now. And, uh, you know, I, I always send him everything. Once I finish something that I think it's good, I send it to him before I send it to anybody else. You know, and he, he signs off on it, and then I give it to you. <laughs> that's awesome. So that's basically how, you know, I met Rob, and he's really, you know, really been a good dude to, for me anyway. Yeah, that's that's Big guy, you know, and I've never heard any anybody complain about him. And you know, if they do, I'd probably have to break their head. So, <laughs> well, guess what? I wasn't going to complain because I think he's a kick-ass <laughs> dude. <laughs> he's awesome, man. I, I know every, everybody at Metalhead Radio loves him. So, well, I know Rob does. He, DJ Rob loves that guy. So, um, he just texted me. He just texted me a little while ago and said Exodus is playing New York Stadium. I guess Megadeth backed out, and, you know, they're, they're filling in, so that's pretty cool. So Rob Duke's a good guy, too. A lot of people don't like him, but I do. <laughs> hey, you know what? We all got people we don't like. <laughs> oh, well, for them. Oh, I, I, I definitely got a lot of people I don't like. <laughs> uh, so what, uh, okay, now, now I'm going to back to asking you the drilling questions, because people in the chat, they're not asking questions. Come on, people, pick up the pace. Yeah, they don't like me. <laughs> that, that's not true. Oh, you know what? I'm going to talk about, you know, I don't remember exactly, you know, it's been like a year or something when, like, we met on Metalhead Radio, and it seems like if I remember quick, correct, quickly, I can't even talk, if I remember correctly, you were like, dude, I'm like in a band, I got some tunes. Do you remember that? Is that kind of how that worked out? I don't even hardly remember now. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, you know, uh, basically I found, uh, I had some of my, my early stuff on, like, I had Die for Your Sins, and I think Breach the Hate was the only two songs I had. And I had them on MySpace, you know, and I just, like, was searching for friends on there, and I, I you know, typed in Metalhead, and it brought up Metalhead Radio's MySpace. So I sent them a friend request, a couple of days went by, and uh, I think it was Scott sent me a message. It was either Scott or Rob sent me a message and said, uh, you know, hey, if, you know, you guys get, you know, on airtime, you know, send us your, your MP3s and we'll play them on the air, you know, and you just basically, if you want to do a uh, a promo, you know, saying Metalhead Radio, Strong Survive, saying, you know, that'd be cool and we'll, we'll give you free airtime. So, you know, I called Machete and I was like, hey, man, just, you know, there's something you think I should do and he's like hell yeah do it you know so then I sent 
I think I sent to the main page or whatever. Right. You know, it takes you to all the DJs. And I sent it to all, all the DJs, and I'm pretty sure your, yours was the first show that I went into in the chat. You know, and I was just like, hey, man, you know, did you get my music? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? You played it the same day, like right when I was on the chat. It was great. I couldn't believe it. I was kind of starstruck. <laughs> it was the first time ever hearing myself on the radio. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I tell you, when I, because I don't even, it seems like I, it seems like I didn't even have it. it. seems like you had to send it to me again or something crazy. I think I did, yeah. I had to send it because you couldn't find it or something. I had to resend it. Yeah, and I played it. If I, I remember, I played your, uh, the, the songs you sent me, I hadn't even previewed them yet. I just threw them on the air and played them. Yeah. That's the kind of faith I had. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad you did. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's kind of a funny story how that even happened. You know, I mean, like I said, you know, I've been trying to get into music for a while, and uh, just haven't really been able to find anybody to play with. I was auditioning for this band locally here in Bradenton, and uh, I went over there a few times. You know. And, just kind of made up words on the fly, you know, and, uh, like, the, the one guitar player, he was a friend of mine, and he was like, oh, yeah, man, I really like it, you know, I really like it, it's great, and, uh, the drummer said something about, oh, you know, we're gonna work on your timing, I was like, all right, that's cool, man, you know, you know, so I called Machete once again, I was like, I don't know, bro, I don't think they're gonna, I don't think they're gonna go for it, you know, keep talking about my timing, you know, and whatever, right. and, uh, I was like, yeah, you know, just keep keep at it, man, you'll be all right. So then they like just didn't call me again, you know, how that goes. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So I told Machete about it again, and he's like, well, look, man, I'll do, you know, play a, basically play a song for me over the phone, one of your riffs, and I'll make it into a song, and I'll send it back to you, and that'll be like your demo that you show bands, you know, and it'll be perfectly in time because it's a drum machine. So I was like, all right, cool. And that was Die Free Sins. I played for him over the phone. Literally, like, 20 minutes later, he's like, all right, man, check your email. So it was there. So I go get it, loaded my machine. I already had the words written. You know, sang the words, sent it back to him. And he's like, I can't even believe that's you. <laughs> you know, because he knew me before I even started singing. Right. He's trying to sing, you know. And he's like, I can't believe that's you. You know, you want to do another one? <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll do another one, you know? So that's kind of how it got started. And every song that I sent back to him, he was like, all right, well, you know, you get two or three more, and you'd be going good, you know? And then it, was, it went from two or three to five or six to ten, you know? So that's where I'm at now. I'm almost to ten, so. Very cool. So how... uh is it you know the 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 way you sing and, and the the style and with the you know just the way your voice sounds is that does that like hurt after a while or is it just kind of normal? Well, I mean, I've never really had any uh, vocal coaches or nothing. I, I basically learned how to do that myself. You know, right? Like I started out singing just to the radio. I never even thought I would be a singer. You know, I always wanted to be more of a guitar player. So when I wasn't getting anywhere with that, <laughs> you know, I was like, all right, man, well, I'll just keep this as a hobby and I'll, I'll focus on this. So I actually started, you know, I, I drive a truck, obviously, you know, I was kind of driving long distance and I, I Machete gave me one of his uh, solo CDs, you know, the stuff he did here. And uh, he's kind of got like a James Hetfield type voice, you know. And uh, so I started singing his songs along with him in the truck, you know, the same exact way he was singing. And, you know, I wanted to get heavier and heavier and heavier. And I was kind of going through like a Pantera style. Right. You know, and I just kind of, I, I listened to a lot of heavy, heavy music. You know, I was listening to Cannibal Corpse, trying to do that, just trying to mimic anything I could, you know, find out how to do. And, uh... A lot of people say I sound like Death Clock, but I agree. But you know, at the time when I started recording my first song, I never even heard of Death Clock. You know, I didn't have cable. <laughs> you know, I never seen the show. I wasn't listening to the radio. I was just kind of listening to CDs that I already had. Right. So you're just doing your own thing. Right. You know, and then, I mean, I know Zach don't like uh, 
five finger death punch. <laughs> but, you know, I, I kind of evolved my voice to what it is now by trying to sing like him, you know. And uh, it doesn't really hurt, you know. I mean, basically, when I do the low tone, I'm almost just talking. Okay. You know, I'm just kind of like just talking, you know, like uh, when Nathan Explosion talks, you know. And uh, I just kind of do it loud. And the one that hurts is like that mid-range, like on Ballad of Blood, the, on the chorus. If I do that a lot, because I haven't practiced that one as much, it, you know, it starts to shred up my voice a little bit. <laughs> You know, because I'm basically screaming as hard and as heavy as I can. Right. You know, and that's what it comes out as. But it sounds, I think it sounds great. So I I, I don't want to put it on everything. <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, I mean, I try to do a, every song with a little different twist on it, you know. I don't want them all to sound exactly the same. So they're all going to have that low tone. Like my newest song, I, I tried not to put that mid-range in there. Tried to do more of a singy type voice, you know, heavy sing voice. And, uh, you know, it turned out pretty good. But no, I mean, the low doesn't hurt, that mid-range kind of hurts a little. Still working on that one. Yeah, I always wonder when I hear that kind of, that, that style of singing, if it's, you know, how that feels. It's, speaking of, just to go back to, um, you mentioned Five Finger Death Punch, did you know that, that their, their lead singer used to be the singer for Moto Grader? I just found that out today. No, I had no idea. I had never even heard of them until uh, The Bleeding came out, you know, and I was, I, was, I, li I was living in Ohio at the time, and I had, like, that Music Choice channel. Right. You know, I went to the metal thing. And the bleeding was on there. I was like, Five Finger Death Punch sounds like a cool band. You know, and they played the video. It's a cool video. You know, and it's, he kind of go. I like the way he can go back from from singing and sounding good to go to the heavy and then back to the singing. You know, I think that's awesome. Yeah, but so, there's not a lot of guys that can do that really well out there. You know, without, yeah, without their voice being like, ah, you know, sounding horrible. Yep. Yeah, I, can, I know I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, so Nate, Nate hanging out in the chat, he's talking about uh, one day that you um, banged out some Pantera on the bass and rocked the neighbors in your carport. What's up with that? Yeah, Nato. Yeah, Nato, he's my boy. I met him at, I met him at Metalhead Radio, you know, I talked to him in the chat. and uh, I got a half stack I was going to sell, and he came and looked at it and plugged his bass in. And I'm not a bass player either. But, you know, I can play Pantera's Respect Walk on everything, even acoustic. <laughs> so, yeah, I banged it out a little bit, you know. I only had it on, like, two, but I was shaking the windows. It was pretty great. Nice. Okay, and he also wants to know, told me to ask you about your seven layers of vocal tracks that you do. <laughs> well, basically, it's not seven. I do, uh, I did, let's see, on Death Before You Die, I did uh, on that uh, gang vocal part. Uh -huh. The main, the main verses and the chorus have three layered voices. Like uh, the verses are two of the hev two of the like heavy Nathan Explosion type voice, and then I do like this weird whispery thing. I just think it sounds cool. And then uh, on the chorus, I do like uh, the mid range and a low. And then like a, an octave higher of the low. But on the uh, on that kind of breakdown part where you hear all them crazy sounding voices in there, yeah. I got seven seven tracks of voices on there. I got I had four tracks, and I actually got my wife <laughs> to come in there and, and do three tracks of voices. You know, so I wanted to sound like a lot of people and not just my own voice. So I got her in there. She does a lot of stuff for me too. Uh, she did some acting work, I guess you would call it, on, uh, I just did a promo for DJ Zombie Love. Oh, yeah, it's, it's killer. Dying. Yeah. Yeah, I sent that to you. Yeah. She, she was, the chick who was getting ate and dying by the zombies. <laughs> yeah, so she loves that stuff. So, you know, basically it was seven tracks on that part only. And uh, I got her three tracks, and I got all the rest of the tracks. That's cool. 
And by the way, just once again, the uh, the intro for my show and the promo you made for my show are killer, so thank you again. Oh, I know. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> Nothing wrong with being sure of yourself, man. No, I mean, I mean, I thought it was cool, you know. Basically, I didn't, I didn't say anything except for shut up, shut the fuck up. Yep. Yeah, I can tell. I can tell when you switch in, when you come in. I mean, it's it's seamless. It's definitely seamless. But I know when it's you because I'm like, I'm like oh yeah, yeah, you know, like, you know, Ash. Oh, it is. <laughs> okay, another question from the chat. Um, Zombie Love wants to know why the Pittsburgh the uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers suck so bad and why the Green Bay Packers are so awesome. Uh, I don't know. I don't watch football. <laughs> Dang it. I'm, so, trying, I'm trying to get her going. I, yeah. Oh, she didn't even say that, did she? <laughs> Hell no. Uh, she's cool, man. She, you know, I did an intro for her, too. It was pretty cool. She asked me to do it. Uh, I did one, like, on the fly just for her in the show. And then I actually went back and, like, did it the right way and gave it to her. It, it turned out pretty good. I think she likes it. <laughs> Hey, there's another um, another Five Finger Death Punch fan, Crazy Cat. She's a she's a huge Five Finger Death Punch fan. Oh, they're definitely great. You know, I'd love to go <laughs> see them. The way of the fit, is I'd end up just knocking some teeth out. <laughs> okay. Being the pit is, is like two different. It's horrible. So, um, growing up, what were your uh, musical influences? Um. Well, like I said, you know, I mean, uh, back when MTV was cool, <laughs> you know, when they actually played good music. I watched a lot of MTV, you know, and um, Pantera, number one, above all, greatest band ever. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. You know, Steinbeck's awesome. Um, propane was heavy, you know, a heavy influence for me. Um, I went from, like, thrash metal. I used to listen to Exodus a little bit. Listen to a lot more now that Deuce is in it, you know. Right. Uh, let's see. Metallica, Slayer, anything heavy, pretty much, you know. Like, you know, my mom, she kind of listened to country music, and I was kind of rebellious. Yeah, I got into some Marilyn Manson when I was in middle school. Uh, But yeah, above all, you know, Pantera, Slayer, you know, those are like two of the greatest bands ever, I think. So what was the first metal, the first metal album you ever bought? First metal album was probably Metallica, Kill 'Em All. That was a good first one for sure. You know, because I mean, I'm only 26, so you know, I wasn't around when, like, <laughs> you know, the I wasn't able to buy albums when you know the older Slayer and older Metallica came out. I got them later. At one time, I think I had all the Metallica albums. You know, I was, I was, you know, I bought a lot of Cannibal Corpse albums just because they were from Tampa, you know. Right. They got to support Florida, you know. Of course. <laughs> hey, um, Burn in the chat wants to know, uh, this is, I don't even know, I'm hoping that you, there's a story behind this oh, question, but God. he wants to know if you named your son <laughs> Cornbread. No, his name is Corbin, but my uh, very good friend, Rob Machete, once again, which is Burn. <laughs> oh, is that Rob? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that's him. He can't fool me. I know his chick, you know. <laughs> I told him I told him my wife was pregnant. You know, he's like, what are you going to name the kid? I was like, oh, shit, I'm going to name him Corbin. He said, no, you cannot name that kid Cornbread. <laughs> so he just kind of stuck, and that's why I call him. <laughs> I call him Cornbread. He's a big kid, you know. He's a great kid. That's awesome. I'm about seven months old now. I kind, of, I kind of took a little hiatus when he was born, you know, just to help out. And I'm back in full swing now, so. Hey, that's not, that's awesome. Nothing, nothing better than being a dad first, I'll tell you that. Oh, yeah, I got a daughter. She's seven. She, she, loves, she loves Machete. She just talked to him on the phone. Said, I like the bald guy. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Hey, your your wife's asking about your side projects and BFT. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I got a lot of friends around here that, that do some rap stuff, you know, and 
I actually just recorded some stuff before I got on the phone with you of theirs. And uh, they're, I think they're here now out front, um, the friends. Uh, get the rap names are King Dub, uh, P.J., and Razor Ray. <laughs> you know, and I, I record their stuff. Uh, I think I was telling you about BFT's Blunt Force Trauma. Yeah, I think you were. Yeah, I was telling you about that. And uh, I don't think I sent it to you yet, but I did. I, I kind of had the beat for them, and I made up the chorus just kind of on the fly. And I just say Blunt Force Trauma over and over a bunch of times, really heavy. And then King Dub, he, he raps over the, the verses. You know, and it sound, I think it sounds awesome for a rap song. I only really listen to rap a lot, but, you know, they do a really good job. I listen to their stuff, and that's about it, <laughs> you know. Well, you have to send me some tunes, okay? Yeah, I was actually trying to send you uh, Blunt Force Trauma before... You know, I was running out of time, and like, you know, I was like, oh my god, I'm going to be late, so I just went outside. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. Next time, man. Just email or something, you know. Right, yeah. But, you know, it's a good mix thing. Like, uh, he raps, and I do the, the chorus, you know, kind of different than my own music. You know, it's more like a punk rock type of scream, you know. Definitely a higher pitch for me, because I only, I only had to do it once, and then I just copied and pasted it. Very so, cool. So, how did you um, how did you come up with the name Ashes of Fire? <laughs> well, I was uh, trying to think of a name for like days, you know, and I couldn't think of nothing. Like everything I thought of that I thought was good was taken, you know. So I had uh, in the breeze of hate. I was writing the lyrics. I actually had a dream about that song, and that's how it got written. Like the end of the world, you know. And, uh, the first line in The Breeze of Hate is from the ashes of fire shall be woken. You know, so I was like, well, I say it in the song. My first name's Ashley. Why not? You know? Right. That's basically where it came from was the lyric in that song. And I just kind of, you know, nobody had it at the time. I don't know if anybody has it now, but no, I, I you know searched it on MySpace, Facebook. Nobody had it, so I'm like, all right, I'm gonna make one right now. I'm just gonna take it, you know. And that's where it came from was the lyric in that song. I don't even remember writing that song. Like I had the dream. The next morning I woke up and then there was a big piece of paper with words on it. Oh wow, that's cool. <laughs> you know, it's you know, psychotic writing stuff going on. <laughs> Okay, I'm behind on chat questions now. Somebody a little while ago asked what you think of Testament. I like Testament. You know, I mean, they're a little before my time. But, you know, I, I listen to anything that's heavy. And I like anything that's heavy. You know, I put a comment on Metalhead Radio family. Some guy was running his mouth and I was like, it's like anything that's heavy, motherfucker. If you don't like it, get off. That's right. Like anything that's heavy, you know, if it's got a, I, I try to put heavy guitars on everything. I put heavy guitars on Johnny Cash one time just to see what it sounded like. So, um, <laughs> Rob wants me to ask you about stomping people with your cleats, and he says it's true. <laughs> oh, yeah, he said he wasn't going to say anything. Good friend. <laughs> Dick face. <laughs> All right, um, well, I should have never even told him the story, but, uh... When I was in high school, I played football. You know, I was, my mom died, stuff like that. I was kind of going through some personal issues. And uh, I was very violent when I was young, you know. I still am, just because, I don't, you know, that's just the way heavy metal is. Uh, but, you know, I was just over the top violent. Like, hitting people for no reason. Stuff like that, you know. That kind of threw me out when I was 17 when my mom died been on my own ever since, you know, and uh, I actually put screws in my cleats, like tapped, you know, tapped on screws in the bottom of my cleats just so I could step on people with them. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and, you know, tear flesh off and stuff like that. That's what it was for. <laughs> and, and, you know, it did work pretty good. I ended up having to take them out. But, it, you know, I got a good three or four hand stomps. 
before I had to take them off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That that's is the story a... behind the dolphin cleats. That's quite the story. Remind me not to uh, piss you off, okay? Yeah. <laughs> no, you're cool, man. <laughs> what, um, okay, so what about the... Are you working on a, a cover for when the album comes out? When you actually get it together as an album? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I do a lot of art stuff myself. Uh, like Ralph would say, you know, he said I said it, but I didn't do it. Your dang self. <laughs> Your dang self. <laughs> Never south. said that, by the way. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I got a lot of ideas for things. You know, I, I come up with stuff all the time. I just got floodgates, you know, running. I think of lyrics all day. You know, I, I can draw just about anything I can look at. So, that's cool. Yeah, you know, I got a lot of ideas. Like the stuff that I got on there now, right? Yeah, uh, basically found a picture that looks cool on like photo bucket or something, and just put the words on it. It's just like a rough draft idea. You know, like I got a few other ones that I made same way. I'm gonna kind of tell a story. Like a moment of clarity is the first one. I got one called End of the Rope. Uh, human atrocity. Stuff like that, you know, just crazy things. Uh-huh. Something, got one called Road to Ruin. You know, just, just kind of concept ideas for somebody else to make into the album. And all the names that I got are pretty much set in stone. A Moment of Clarity is the name. The artwork for now is just something that I made with, with paint from Windows, you know? Right. But, you know, it looks good, it's cool, it's something to look at, anyway. Yeah, I like it. The, the, the basic idea would be similar to what the album cover would actually be. Right. Hey, um, Crazy Cat, in the uh, in the chat, she wants to know what you think of black metal. Yeah, I like black metal, you know, I mean, I'm not like, I don't love it, you know, but I, I like it, I'll listen to it just because it's heavy. Uh, some of it, you know, I can't understand. Um, you know, I'm not like satanic or nothing. I don't worship the set, you know, the devil. But I mean, you know, it's cool. I'll listen to it. Anything with a, you know, good, good groove, something you can move around to. You know, I'm kind of more into the bands that I mentioned. You know, with the the heavy chunk. I like that real chunky sound. You know. Oh, yeah, I mean, I like it. All right, so if I was to uh, grab your MP3 player your, or listen to whatever you have in your car, what would I find you listening to right now? Probably Blunt Force Trauma. <laughs> there you go. Uh, the, the other guy I was telling you about that did the verses, he called me and uh, was like, hey, man, you want to shoot a video for that song? You know, I think that song's really great. Um transition song because it's rap and it's got the heavy metal sound on the on the vert or the chorus so you know you know he's like you know just listen to it you know maybe we can come up with some kind of a script or something for for a video so like, yeah man I'm sure that's cool so I've been listening to that for the past three or four days just to kind of write down ideas for a script and All right that makes sense but other than that you know Generation Kill. I got. He sent me their whole album. I jam the shit out of that all the time. Uh, I listen to a lot of my own stuff. I don't listen to the radio pretty much at all. Um, Slipknot, Slayer, Pantera. You know, if I could get Metalhead Radio on my MP3 player just to play all the time, I probably would. I know. I can, <laughs> I, I look forward to the day when you can just tune into internet stations on your, in your car. I mean, I think there's some cars out there you already can, and I just look forward to the day when you can just do, in every car, you can just tune into the internet and find your radio station. It's going to be awesome. Uh, that is, yeah, it's a great station. I can't say enough about it. Uh, you like, a, like you said, you know, I sent you my stuff and you just put it on. No, no questions. Luckily you did, because I've come a long way since that happened. <laughs> Yeah, you have, and that's awesome. And you know, uh, all the other DJs like to play your stuff too. So I don't, I don't want to even make it sound like you know, oh man, yeah, I was the first to play. You know, I don't even care about that. I just, I just know that 
it was it's good stuff, and we all like to play it. So I'm, I'm glad that you sent it to us so we could play it. Well, you're very welcome. <laughs> so out of all your songs, which one's your favorite to play? Uh, I knew this was coming. <laughs> I like all of them. Um, I think my favorite one is probably Death Before You Die. Just because it's that chunky, chunky, heavy, slow song, you know? Yep. And, and I just like the way it, it grooves. Like, I, you know, if, if it was a different band and I was, like, at their show, when they played that, I could just, you know, see myself in the pit just destroying people. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, I really like the breathing just because of the story behind the song. You know, it was a really crazy dream. Like, the planet was coming apart. You know, and like nobody was just like the whole the whole chorus of that song is basically what happened. You know, waters rise, earth will shake, scorch the skies, life's mistake. That whole deal was in this dream, and it was very like I thought I was into the world in my dream. I woke up thinking I was dead. You know, basically, uh, die for your sins is a good one. Uh, I like Ballad of Blood. I like all of them, but I think my favorite one is probably Death Before You Die. Very cool. I think I'm getting a hint here on the chat to uh, throw a plug out, so I'm going to do it. Um, so just for everybody listening, Rob Duke's Generation Kill will be playing at Yankee Stadium with Exodus on the Big Four show on Wednesday. So if you're in that area of Yankee Stadium, you can go to the show, hit it up. It will kill and shred. There, plug for you, Rob. <laughs> yeah, he probably wasn't here earlier when I actually said that, but you know, hey. Better late than never, right? <laughs> uh, I, I know he's put it on there like four, five, six, seven, ten times now. So, uh, this boy, you know. I'm exaggerating. I, a lot, I, I, I would do the same thing. I did the same thing when I first started coming on. You know, like, listen, look out for Rob Machete. Rob Machete, you know, he's he's great. Like yeah, best day he is. Actually, he's the best day he is. <laughs> okay, so, so that's an inside joke. I love inside jokes. Lil on the chat is asking something about socks. I don't know what she wants to know, though. She's Come on, Lil. What's your question about socks? Oh, she's asking the socks. Lilith. Yeah. yeah she's asking, well, I don't have any socks on right now, actually. I'm just walking around on my patio. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't have any socks on right now. It's kind of the Florida style, you know. I, I tell you what, I don't, I don't wear socks until it's, like, snowing outside. But it don't snow here, so I don't have socks on a lot. <laughs> Unless I'm at work or, you know, going somewhere, I just kind of hang out at home a lot of time. I don't go a lot of places. I just I work on music a lot. That's about it. R- really, Lil? So, she wants to know what your favorite what brand of socks what are. Sock? What's that? She wants to know what your favorite brand is. Oh, socks? <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess. I don't oh, know. White ones. <laughs> white ones. <laughs> Dang. This interview is going downhill fast here. We're talking about socks. She does that to everybody. She did that to Machete, too, and uh, then DJ Rob switched it around and said, how big's your cock? <laughs> <laughs> I can see Rob doing that, for sure. Yeah, you know, he's good. I love that guy. Okay, man, well, anything else you want to um, say while we got you on air? Um, I love my wife. love my boys. Rob from my city is the best. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You good, know, good plugs, man, good plugs. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> okay, well, I want to thank you immensely for, uh, for doing this. You know, I'm glad that we started talking about it last week and we can make it happen so quickly. This is awesome. And be able to get you on here live, that's even more killer. So, truly appreciate it. Great. You know, uh, Rob said, you know, don't choke. <laughs> I said, you know, I don't do this very often. <laughs> and I've, been, inside joke. I've been doing it a lot and I keep choking, so it's just part of the gig. I think I did all right for my first try, you know. <laughs> you, you, you have rocked it out, man. You have rocked it out. Cool, man. I'm glad you liked it, you know. I'm glad you liked the music. Thank everybody for even paying attention to it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Ex- exactly. Exactly. What, um, okay, one last thing. 
I, you've already made me a promo, so, but I'm gonna have you, if you don't mind, make one for uh, make one for the station while I have you on air. All right. And can you do a little uh, growly voice? <laughs> you, you love it when I say growly too, don't you? That's a, that's a rim technical term <laughs> for everybody listening. Yes, my wife says I'm not very good with technical terms, so it's it's out there. All right. What do you want me to say? <laughs> The freedom is yours, man. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, I mean, it can just be, you know, ashes, ash from ashes of fire, and you're listening to Metalhead Radio, and then, you know, Metalhead Radio kicks ass, or I don't know, something. How about DJ Rem kicks ass? Uh, however you want to do it. I'm, I'm cool. All uh, right, you ready? Go for it. Uh, this is Ash from Ashes of Fire. You listen to MetalheadRadio.com. DJ Rem locked up. Like I said, kicks. All right, sweet man. Yeah, you like that? <laughs> I, I love the I love the the growly voice. <laughs> the growly voice. Dang it! I did not mean that for that to sound gay. That kind of sound kind of gay. Sorry. Uh, I was actually gonna come on to the interview uh, as Nathan Explosion. You know, be like, hey, what are you doing down there? <laughs> nice. You know, so. You could have come, oh, you know, when um, when DJ Rob interviewed um, Band of Orcs, they came on in, in their know, acting like they do. It was crazy. It was weird. That's <laughs> awesome. It was very crazy. So, okay, well, thanks again, man. Appreciate it. I'm going to uh, jam a bunch of your tunes now for the for the listeners. So we're gonna we're gonna sit back and crank it to Ashes of Fire right here on Metalhead.